So I got one corner done with the 8 inch Super ATV portals on the Talon X. Uh, big shout out to Max Rock for hooking me up with these. Um, if you need to get a hold of him, he's got a website I'll put in the description. He's also on my Facebook page. Um, got me these things faster than anyone else could at a great price. Um, so you can see they're clocked, a lot of clocking. This gives you one half inches of rake. Install is pretty simple. Only thing I didn't do yet was the brakes because I want to bleed all the brakes together. So I'm going to wait and do that last after I get them all four done. Um, these ball joints are kind of a bear with this design of the bracket. You cannot get a socket on here very well with an impact. So you have to do it with a wrench, which makes the ball joint want to spin. So you got to push a lot of up force on the bracket to get it to not do that while you tighten it down. This ball joint came pre-installed. You have to glue the boot on and it comes with a lock nut. That's the dumbest thing in the world. You don't need a lock nut in a ball joint. You've got a cotter pin and lock nuts to make the joint want to spin. So then you had to put a jack on the A-arm to keep that from happening. That was really the only tricky part. The rest of it just followed the instructions. I'm gonna do this side now, and I'm gonna get someone to video me doing it so you get a full view, and I'll try to talk through what I'm doing. Another thing that was kind of tricky was separating this upper ball joint. At first, this steel collar wanted to slide out of the aluminum knuckle, so I had to hit right here with the chisel to bust the ball joint. Not too bad if you know what you're doing. Now that I know, it'll be even easier. So I'm gonna try to talk you through step by step, but uh, not slow me down too much. So the first thing you do is pull the cotter pin on the axle nut, take a pair of dikes, pull it straighten out a little bit. Try not to booger it up too much so you can use it on another project later. And you grab this end and you kind of pry it out. Throw it in the box, gotta save that shit. And you pull off your factory axle nut. It's a 30 millimeter, like most Hondas these days. A little bit of Loctite on there. Save that for later. Next thing you do is uh, pull the caliper. That's just two 17 millimeters. Obviously use an impact for everything, for speed and power. You won't need these either because you put new caliper brackets and new caliper bolts and everything else. So it's a little stuck on there, just full of mud. Good chance to clean out your calipers. Then you can take off this little bracket back here because you're going to install new brake lines with new caliper, with the new, with the new caliper brackets and everything. You won't be reusing this mount. Might be reusing the screw. Save that for later. Okay. Now the next thing you do is to pull off your rotor. Um, it's always good to pull it off right after you pull the caliper. Because if you don't do that, you could bump it. And it'll fall and cut off one of your toes. That's why I'm missing a toe. Just kidding. <laughs> This little plastic guy right here will bend out of the way, you don't need to worry about it, just link it off. So there's your stock hub and rotor. So now that we're out here, you gotta start busting bolts. So this one has a cotter pin too, same kind of deal. Just grab it with your dikes, straighten it out. These dikes are pretty dull, I need to get some sharp ones for these little tiny cotter pins, but it works. that out and that's the 19 millimeter having your uh, super cheap not impact rated color coated of harbor freight sockets comes in really handy so take that all the way off and then screw it on a few threads the reason for that is while we're busting this ball joint we don't want to hit the threads and ruin the ball joint so now you gotta find a hammer it tangential to the thing so it's a cone cone you know press fit so if I hit it this way it will separate the cone yes I scratched the powder coat so that ball joint is separate. So you can drop this air arm all the way down and get that out of your way. Next thing you do is pull the shock. It's also a 17 millimeter. Got to back it up with a wrench with a nut on it. The reason I'm pulling the shock, um, you don't necessarily have to do this, but it just makes it easier to get to this nut. So if you pull the shock, <coughs> the bottom shock mount, you can pull the shock out and flip this out of the way, and your axle will drop out of your knuckle. And once that happens, you got easy access to this nut. You can get that out with impact. So this is a little bit of a trick. So I turn the steering wheel all the way to give a better angle. Got to get way in here and pry this thing off. Man, that is tight. So I'm going to do something a little different than I did on the other side. So I can, if you take the tie rod end off first, you can spin the knuckle all the way around which will let you get a little better view of what you're trying to do there. So we're going to do that. 
the other one wasn't positioned quite in the back like that. So this is a, the tie rod is just another cotter pin, which is nice and easy to get to and very soft. You could probably pull this sucker off with your fingers if you had to. Um, and that's just a 14 millimeter, kind of tiny. But what I really like about these tie rod ends on this thing is they're automotive style and they're actually a press fit. A lot of the foilers are tapered. The same deal, take that nut off, put it back on to protect the threads. You get your bam bam. And you can see it's kind of bolstered right here. Almost like they want you to hit it with a hammer. So you just hit, you know, tangential to it. And it'll separate real easy like that. That's the way to do it. You do need to reuse that hardware with the portals. You got your tie rod separated. You can actually flip the knuckle all the way around. And that'll make it a lot easier to get in there and see what you need to see. This is the, this is the easy side. It's still not going to be gravy though. Get in here with your screwdriver. Get that sucker out. Oh, I got it. Nice. Take one of these little straight picks, put it through the eye. It's a pro tip right there, boy. And then work it out with that until you can get to your spot when you drive with your dikes. Really rank, rank on it. There you go. That's how you do it. And now that we got the axle out of the way, we can easily zip this sucker off with a wobble extension and a 19 millimeter. Short socket would work better, but there's plenty of room for a long one in there. Okay, so this is where you got to be real careful to damage this nut or those threads because they're both going to get reused. And if you mess them up, you're going to be changing that ball joint. If you don't have one, you ain't riding this weekend. So this is the trick on the other side. Usually I'd say smack it tangentially to it, but if you do that on this one, you'll actually knock this metal insert out of the aluminum knuckle. So get yourself a big dull chisel, go right here, and wham away. Uh, it's bouncing a little bit, so I'm going to throw the bolt back in the shock to kind of limit it from bouncing so much. Just give you a little more mass to hit against. Let's see if that'll be the trick. I think it's close. Bam! Take your nut off. And we're good to go. We didn't damage the nut, the threads, or the ball joint. So we're going to reuse that. There's your stock knuckle. That's really light. So we're replacing this super light piece of aluminum with a bunch of steel and a lot of aluminum as well. This is your portal back plate. I've already gone ahead and super glued the boot onto the ball joint, which is great. Thank you, China. Um, and I've already packed it full of grease. These don't come with a whole lot of grease in them. Grease them from the top, grease them from the bottom. Get that moving around nice and smooth like. Now we're going to start fighting with this. So Super ATV puts grease in these two holes. Don't quite agree with that because it makes the ball joint want to spin more and a spinning ball joint makes it hard to tighten down. But I'm sure they had a reason. No, probably did. So same 19 that just came off of there. Stab it on there and push up on it. And then thread the nut on by hand until it bottoms out. It doesn't feel super good. You don't want any resistance on that, you're going to start spinning the ball joint. So I feel a little bit of resistance, I'm going to try the other nut. So you got two of these nuts, because one was on the bottom, you don't reuse the bottom one. So let's try the other one and see if it's any smoother. You do not want to get this thing stuck up there with a spinning ball joint. That'll ruin your day real quick. Where'd the other one go? Hmm. Throw it in the chair? Nope. Sure, it's missing a button. There we go. So, also, to make this easier, I'm going to put some PB blaster. Oh. Help the slide on there a little easier. Much better. So, that nut had a little bit of burr on it. Like I said, get it up as far as you can with your fingers. And then what I like to do is uh, pick it up here, 
from tap here. Kind of pre-seat it. And that's going to give it some motivation not to spin when you start cranking on it. 19 millimeter wrench. So far it's not spinning, that's excellent. This isn't usually a problem taking them off because once you've got it torqued down in there and you know it kind of locked itself into place, you don't have to worry about the shaft spinning, the nut will come off a little easier. But I wish you could get a socket in here. Oh, I think it spun a little bit. That's not a good feeling. Oh, we got it. Okay. So, now that you got that going on, you got to find a way to hold the knuckle so you can torque it down better. So, what I figured out last time was I can use this extension. And, uh, here it's rolling right over a crack. A very unfortunate parking job. You can kind of stick this in here. Give you some leverage to pry against. I'm gonna get this thing nice and tight. Portals are mostly about torque specs. You wanna not over tighten some stuff, and you wanna really tighten the shit out of other stuff. So, this is one of those ones you wanna tighten the shit out of. A lot of people tell you you never should reuse a collar pin. Privileged assholes. Just gotta use your dikes as a little hammer. Straighten it out enough to get back in the hole. Spit on it, good to go. You don't actually have to spit on it, that was a joke. Bend one up and one down. Alright, so that ball joint is in there. I would like to get that tighter, but I can't get an impact on it. And you can only really do so much with a wrench and a pry bar on something that's wobbling around. It's in there pretty good, it's probably to spec, but just due to the amount of leverage you're putting on that ball joint, I'd like that to be tighter, but it is what it is. So now we gotta put the axle through the hole. Pull this out again, pick it way up in the air like that. Grab your axle. Okay. Put your shock bolt back in, we're done messing with that. Please don't forget to Put your nut back in your shock and retorque everything down. If you look at the other side, I'm pretty sure I forgot to do that. Go ahead and look at that shock. Let's see. Is there a nut on the back of there? Wow. Quality control. That would have been an engineering disaster. Go ahead and throw our tie rod on. It's pretty simple. It just goes in like factory. Nice press fit. Got to get this weird nut, which is a 14. I'd like that to be like a 17, but you can always get what you want. <clears throat> yes, I use an impact for everything, including this tiny little 10 millimeter bolt. It's got a no, you know, unga And that was that small cotter pin, which I really screwed up. Really replaced that, but literally a 0% chance that's going to happen. Bottom ball joint. Fun continues. Just leave this dangling. We're gonna replace the brake lines with longer ones, like I said, so, yeah. So carefully put that in the hole, pick up on it. We gotta go find our Super AD TV supplied washer, nut, and powder pen. Your axle for now, right? Obviously this is all gonna get aligned once you have it splined into the portal box. Just focus on the task at hand, which is the ball joint. So, uh, washer, nut. And now this sucker is gonna wanna spin so give you a 19 millimeter on your impact, preferably a fast, quick impact, not like a big, slow unga dunga. And then you gotta pick up on this arm as hard as you can. I like to wedge my leg underneath it, which you get against the shock pressure, and then you might be able to zip it up there. I got it. So sometimes it wants to just spin, and that's because it's a freaking lock nut. That's some more whammy. That baby's torqued. New cotter pin. Very cream. Grab the long end with your dikes. Bend it around town. It's a pretty stiff cotter pin. Okay. Factory fresh. Okay. 
So that's all jammed up and good to go. It's pretty funny that if you push down on this, you actually get more down, travel out of the shock. It's almost like it's holding a vacuum in there. See that? It's a little weird, not used to that. I also have my preload set really low though for a nice cushion side. Locked out and putting the plugs in it. I re definitely recommend putting the plugs in it before you put it on the machine because one of the holes in the plugs is pretty hard to get into, get to once it's on there. So the portals come in these boxes with nice foam in them. Like they're a piece of jewelry or something. Because they are. Ah, God, they're heavy. Um, I guess it's about thousand dollars a piece. So they have three plugs. That's just to give them a universal fit for the portal. So this portal is working on a lot of different machines. They use the same box and two lower gears. They just swap the uh, top gear around. Top gear, get it? So in the front, we put the plug in the back hole. We like putting it in the back hole. Um, and then you put it in the bottom. Also like the bottom hole. Um, and then that's gonna be the fill. We leave that out because obviously we're gonna put gear oil in it before we drive it around. Uh, check that it spins freely. This is where the axle ends up getting straightened out. <coughs> so that axle's already nice and greasy. If it wasn't with brand new Honda, I would uh, grease the splines really good. Line that up, stab it. Bam. And you actually can let that hang there. Um, it's not going to fall. I wouldn't, you know, get to hold your mouth just right and not breathe too hard. It might fall. Now you got to get all your bolts. <coughs> So it involves four short bolts and two long bolts. They can be identified because the long bolts have a smaller head on them. And this is what secures the portal to the back plate. It's also gonna be funny, once we get to this step, we can drive it around with the little tires on the back and the portals on the front. It looks like one of those, you know, squatted dog taking a shit trucks that we all love so much. Super ATV is very adamant that you do not use an impact here and that you torque these. I think it's the 60 foot pounds. So obviously that's exactly what we're going to do. Because um, why would you void your warranty on a $4,000 upgrade? Turn the camera off. They don't need to see this. All these bolts are torqued to spec per the manual. Read your manual. Um, I decided to put one shim. It comes with shims behind the caliper brackets. It says use them as needed. I guessed and put one. I might have to add another one, whatever. I think they might do that for aftermarket brake pads or something. No one can really say for sure. Now you need to find some Loctite. I recommend blue Loctite. And you gotta get your recessed nut that secures the axle. It is important to know that um, the axle is you know, usually it's a very fine thread nut. Um, usually the axle is what holds the bearing together and holds the wheel in the machine. That's not the case anymore. Now I have this is a full floater setup. I didn't even think about that. Portals are full floater. The weight of the vehicle is not distributed on the axle shaft in any way. It goes through the yeah, so Nice. Never thought of that before. Um, so put some Loctite on there. I like to spray a little bit of a uh, PB blaster on these splines to make sure my axles never get stuck in there. It's a little bit of a deal. <clears throat> and the point of what I was just saying is you don't have to go crazy torquing this thing down. This is not holding the wheel on. All this is doing is holding the axle in the top gear of your portal box. So just snug it. That's plenty. There's not a whole lot of threads of engagement. It is better than a Rubicon or a P500 or a P700, but you can see that most of the threads of this nut are not engaging the axle, and that's just the way it is. If you lose your manual, by the way, Super ATV is pretty good about putting the PDFs online. So you can actually look at the PDF of the uh, thing you're buying before you buy it. And if I had done that, I would have realized that this thing came with ball joints pre-installed and it would save me some money. Also, if anybody needs some ball joints for one of these, I got some extras because I'm an idiot and I ordered ball joints for no reason. I eventually will upgrade the top ball joints to Keller's probably. I hear that they do make them for the top. Um, I'll probably actually wait until they make them for the top and bottom and put them on both. <clears throat> definitely, definitely don't use an impact on this. Stop recording. What you do is prepare the hub and um, rotor. So it's important to know, if you read the instructions, they'll be in there. There are differences between the front and rear rotors. So you see there's three right here. You want the ones with the skinny spacer on the front. The fat spacer goes on the rear. So you gotta go to your vise. 
<clears throat> Pick which sort of studs you want to put. Uh, M10 by 1.5, that's like, like the little ATV wheels. And we're going to run 38, so we're going to put the heavier duty studs, which are M12 by 1.5, which is a very common automotive stud. It's easy to find lug nuts for. And you actually have to hammer these in. So there's a bunch of different holes in here. It looks like Swiss cheese. And that's because these are all different lug patterns. So this is Polaris, this is Can-Am, this is something else, that's Honda, whatever. So you want to put it in these holes, um, which are the second biggest. Make sure they're 90 degrees apart. <coughs> that's 4x137, obviously. If you can't see that, you just don't have a very good calibrated eye. And you just put a hammer and a chisel. And you hammer them in there, just like you would do with any spine stud. Careful not to damage the threads of the other ones while you're installing them. Look at them from an angle. Oh yeah, they're all flush. We're ready to install that. It's very important to put um, a nice layer of old anti seeds here. Otherwise, you'll never get this sucker off when you need to go change the seal and maintenance it. What you do is prepare the hub and the um, rotor. So it's important to know, if you read the instructions, it'll be in there. There are differences between the front and rear rotors. So you see there's three right here. You want the ones with the skinny spacer on the front. The fat spacer goes on the rear. So you gotta go to your vise. Pick which sort of studs you wanna put. Uh, M10 by 1.5, that's like, like little ATV wheels. And we're gonna run 38, so we're gonna put the heavier duty studs, which are M12 by 1.5, which is a very common automotive stud. It's easy to find lug nuts for. And you actually have to hammer these in. So there's a bunch of different holes in here, it looks like Swiss cheese. And that's because these are all different lug patterns. So this is Polaris, this is Can-Am, this is something else, that's Honda, whatever. So you wanna put it in these holes, um, which are the second biggest. Make sure they're 90 degrees apart. <coughs> That's 4x137, obviously. If you can't see that, you just don't have a very good calibrated eye. And you just put a hammer and a chisel. And you hammer them in there, just like you would do with any spine stud. Careful not to damage the threads of the other ones while you're installing them. Get them from angle. Oh yeah, they're all flush. We're ready to install that. It's very important to put um, a nice layer of old anti seeds here. Otherwise, you'll never get this sucker off when you need to go change the seal and maintenance it. <coughs> There's a magnetic plug stuck inside the nut. We're running out of daylight. Might have to do the rear in the morning. White claws here in the fridge. Ugh. Open this and turn into the Tin Man. Shit just gets everywhere. Get you a nice layer on there. <clears throat> It'll go a long way to help me get that off next time. You could obviously use a puller or whatever, but. You put this on here, you usually don't need a puller. <coughs> Obviously, the studs face out, the press fit thing goes in. You know, Super ATV, when they made their Gen 1 portals, they didn't have a press fit here. They had an aluminum caliper bracket. Um, they didn't use an O ring, and they had all these issues. And then this guy with a YouTube channel told them what all their issues were, and they took his advice and they made these things, the Gen 3s, and they didn't give him any money. How inconsiderate. Um, anyways, and this sucker just keeps buying their products. Made in China. All right. <clears throat> now this gets torqued to 300 foot pounds. If you don't have a 300 foot pound um, torque wrench, I recommend getting a one and a half foot long. Or yeah, wait, no. Yeah, get a two foot long pry bar and stand on it. And if you're about 150 pounds, it's 300 foot pounds. Right? Pretty simple. So that's we're gonna get the torque wrench out. Obviously, I have a calibrated 
300 foot pound torque wrench. Turn the camera off. So obviously we just torqued that down. You gotta bend one forward and one down. Some wheels, although by the way, might interfere with this because this is a pretty big center hub. So depending on the wheel you have, you might have to run a spacer just to clear that. That kind of just occurred to me. Hope that it's not the case with my wheels. We'll find out very shortly. All right, so that's there. Um, we're not gonna mess with the brakes yet. I think we're already done with this side. Wow, that went really quick. Let's get a wheel out. These are my favorite tires in the world. 30 year Aztecs on M12, MSA wheels, 22s. Deuce, deuce. Um, you gotta have 22s to clear eight inch portals. So let's see how these work. That center borehole looks really big and the way they're spaced off, I think they're gonna work just fine on that big old portal hub. <coughs> Obviously, it's gonna have to come back off because you're gonna have to. Uh, uh oh. Houston, we have a problem. We need a taller jack stand. We need a taller floor jack. Oh, it's looking wiggling on there. Oh, yeah. Just tall enough. Let's grab a lug nut and tighten that down and check all the clearances and stuff. Oh, Lars stole my lug nut. So that's torqued down there flush. Just want to check the clearance and check this out. So we've got about an inch from the bracket to here, which means I could even run a wheel with less offset. However, <coughs> the 22, this is about as little offset as you can get. I wish I could find a wheel that was even skinnier. Because when it since hits the ground, it's gonna get a little wider. So you see I got about an inch and a quarter there, and about, I don't know, five eighths of an inch there. So that's plenty of clearance. So that's, that's good to go. Um, I may even get these wheels machined. You can machine off half an inch of that aluminum to suck it in some. I like the wheel to sit right against the bracket. That way the whole portal tucks into the wheel. And if you sit here, you can see that portal. I'd rather that tuck in the wheel so it doesn't drag. But man, that's pretty impressive looking and it's got some freaking ground clearance done. Okay. Um, I need to jack up the back now and to do all to do the rear and then do all the brakes. So I gotta get some jack sands out. The back's a little easier in the front as expected. There's no ball joints to deal with. Ball joints are a pain in the ass. So all you gotta do is uh, pull your axle nut, same way you did the front, cotter pin, 30 millimeter socket, pull the axle nut. Um, then once you do that, pull your caliper bracket right here two 14 millimeter bolts, zip those out, take your caliper, leave it up here, undo this eight millimeter here to get the caliper out of the way, undo both of these 17s on your trailing or uh, radius bars, just, these just come right off, let those hang down, and then you got four 14s in here, and that's it to, to, to disassemble it, the back's really simple, and the way the portal goes on is super smart. I'm actually pretty impressed with the engineering there. It's a great TV must have hired some actual engineers or let China figure it out. So you take off these nuts. This is what holds the bearing carrier to the trailing arm. And you can actually just grab this arm and pull it out this way to get to this nut. And then you use a wobble or anything. <coughs> and there's your bearing carrier. That simple. Um, and that's pretty lightweight. You gotta get all these nuts. These nuts. All right, that's it, it's disassembled. So um, I leave the brake caliper hooked up until I get everything done. Um, and we'll show you how to do all that route the brake line. So once you get to this step, you grab your caliper, your uh, portal bracket, <coughs> and there's an adapter piece. They only fit one way. You can figure out what side goes which by these arms go to the back, obviously. And then you need a couple of nuts which I don't know where they went. Oh, here they are. They're a little smaller than the other nuts you use on the front. You just have four. Um, actually, you know, you need six nuts. That's enough for now. I'll come find them later. Um, and this just bolts to the trailing arm. These four adapt it to the trailing arm. And then the two other ones just secure that aluminum plate to your portal back plate. It's pretty elegant. 
And then you bolt your portal on, your top two portal bolts go into these holes and they thread into the aluminum. So definitely don't over torque those. There's no nuts there because there's no room to put nuts. So they got gotten thread in the aluminum. Pretty sharp. Very solid. I've never had a bike with trailing arms and portals before. And a trailing arm, if you think about it, is really just a built-in um, track bar. It's got a very long moment arm. This whole moment arm deals with the torque and the twisting force of the portal. It's pretty excellent. <laughs> The instructions say something about like, if I put the axe through the hole, um, the instructions say something about like, don't torque everything until the instructions tell you to, which is kind of dumb because you have to torque these before you put the portal bracket on. If you don't, the portal bracket covers up um, this bolt, so you wouldn't be able to torque that once the portal was on there. So yeah, I don't know. Get these nuts on. Caliper's kind of in the way right there. Slides up here. Now these are um, countersunk, pretty pretty high quality feeling uh, bolts. The problem with them is <coughs> they're Allens, so you can't put a whole lot of torque on an Allen head, right? You'll strip it out. So what I did was I held held the Allen side with regular Allen wrench, and hit the other side with an impact. Um, and because they are countersunk, it's like a press fit, and that kept it from spinning. It really didn't put too much torque on my Allen wrench at all. Only the Allen wrench was used for the running torque to get that bolt to center. Um, to sink that in there, and then it was good to go. I think they are size 15. Yeah. So you zip these guys down. Kind of going a star pattern as if it's tightening down the wheel, right? It's always good. Mm. This is actually a pretty easy job. I usually wouldn't do something like this in the dark, but pretty pretty gravy install on the tower. The hardest part is the front brake lines. Why? Well, Kind of assuming that because I haven't done them yet, but I think they're going to be kind of a pain in the butt. <clears throat> so the man doesn't give a torque spec for this, so I'm just going to go around and do some hunga dungas. But there's so many bolts and a lot of surface area, I don't think I'm going to have any problems here. I think the problem is going to be in the front with the ball joints or the tie rods. I think the rear is going to be very reliable. So for that reason, I'll be doing most of my most of my rutting it up in two wheel drive because. I have a lot of faith in the way the back setup is, not so much faith in the front. Hook up your trailing arms, which uh, hook up with these bolts that I had earlier. I don't know where I put them. These nice shoulder bolts, make sure you put the washers on them, otherwise they'll eat the aluminum because they don't have like a built on washer. Just kind of force them on there. Hand is not a hammer. I know, I know. And those use the same nuts as all the bolts that hold the back plate to the portal box. Um, again, I didn't see a torque spec on these and the instructions, so use your judgment. Don't go too crazy torquing on them. You're torquing down two pieces of aluminum, and uh, that's cast aluminum, so. I don't think you rip one of them off over torquing it, but I don't think you need to go crazy on this either. They are lock nuts. Yes, eventually I will upgrade these arms. The factory ones are pretty chintzy, but <clears throat> that's going to be another project. I might even just do the bottom arm with an arch because when this gets hit by a cypress knee, you're in trouble. The problem is you get this much ground clearance. Cypress knees really are a thing of the past. <clears throat> so I can't even see what color my sockets are. You see, I'm using my medium size impact here to not go too crazy with the torque. There, that's checked. And once you get that on there, grab the plate, go for some play. You will have a little bit, and that's just the play that's kind of inherent in these spherical um, type joints Honda uses. I think it's totally normal, in my opinion. 
Okay, now for the portal box. Back and forth. Back. Thing I did in the front, hold it 90 degrees to get it lined up on the spines. And then twist it down, push it down. Bam! And then get all the bolts. I'm a pretty big fan of that setup right there. <clears throat> so this really is not defined well in the instructions, but I'll tell you how I did the last side. Does it work great? I got these two started first because they're going into the aluminum. So you don't want to torque everything else down, then do these because you're going to cross thread them. So use these bolts to kind of um, these two with the smaller head going after because that's for the caliber brackets. So use all your other bolts to kind of hold it in about the right spot. And then use those to start it. I think it also helps to, uh, there you go. So you really don't want to cross thread these. You want to make sure you start them by hand. Probably should put some anti-seize on them, but pick it up, keep the weight off the bolt, and start them both by hand in that aluminum. That one went in real smooth. So you get a couple threads in there. This one is fighting me a little bit, so let's use a little motivation. No, it's fine. So get those in there pretty good. Put a little bit of pressure on those, and then go through and torque your other ones. That worked out well for the last time, so I'll do it again. Those splines don't run in gear oil. The, um, they'll, get, they'll get rusty and stuff, so always grease the splines before inserting into the rear end. Um, and then just snug this thing down. And that's all you gotta do. There's lock that on there, don't go overboard. Now, what did I do with that cover? I thought I already brought it over there. I forgot. <laughs> now I gotta put the cover on the, the access cover for that mat. Obviously, I'm going to get my torque wrench out and torque these down to like a 10 inch pounds or whatever it's called for. Caliper goes on the back of the portal. That's important to know. Always make sure your bleeder's up anytime you're doing brakes. On the front, you have to swap the calipers left to right in order to achieve that because they go from the front to the back. Whatever. They come with these new bolts. Make sure your bolts are hitting your rotor. Make sure your rotor is not rubbing your caliper. It's pretty close, but it's not rubbing. So I think it's fine. Um, they come with different shims, right? So, you know, your caliper is going to push all the way this way when pull forth is supposed to push it this way and look for rubbing. Looks fine. So now you disconnect this 10 millimeter up here, a little banjo, and you replace these two brake lines. All right, those are two piece lines from the factory with this one single braided line. So there's your factory line. Don't lose your banjo bolt. That right there. Obviously, we're changing lines, so it's gonna be a very arduous bleeding process, unfortunately. <clears throat> Let's start this one first. Make sure you got your copper washer on both sides. The bend goes away from the caliper. Figured that out. See that on the other side. Get that started there. Run it down to it's about snug by hand, and then this line's gonna follow up like, like so. So that looks pretty good. So we'll route this along the trailing arm. Snaps into the factory holders, kind of the little plastic clip thingies. <clears throat> it lines up pretty decently up here. So always be careful to cro uh, not cross thread these. Start it by hand and run it in a few turns before you put a tool on it. Plenty. And don't forget to tighten this side. 12 millimeter. Never use an impact on a banjo, they're hollow. Unless you're me and you're extremely well calibrated. Okay, now we've got to put a couple of uh, uh, little line, line mounts. Way so it matches. Really fancy like that. That sounds a little cross-threaded, but I promise it was 
cross threaded. That's just because there's a little bit of powder coat on those threads. And then this one, you want it to come like that. Voila. Pretty sweet, right? Now we're ready to put our wheel on. Unfortunately, um, my jack doesn't go high enough, so you can see the situation we have before us. Um, kind of reminds me of my buddy Chris at Hole Ball, except he was doing it in sand with a longer pull before. So this is a little safer. Do have a jack center there for safety, and I put one wheel on so if it falls, it won't be too catastrophic, hopefully. On a vehicle that's this tall, you don't want that much tire roll, so. I will put some hair in the tires. Not even high enough yet, of course, because these things always lean to the passenger side, or the driver's side, because the engine's kind of off-center. That doesn't really sound so bad. Mint. I do have the front wheels chalked for safety. It's about the only safe thing I'm doing right now. Still not high enough. What a machine. Oh yeah, that's what. Nice. It's a little hard to get into now. Just a little update walk around. So I did some riding last night. One thing I had to adjust is the brake lines. It's important that your brake lines are mounted just like I'm showing you here. Um, if you don't have it mounted like this, it won't quite work. The lines were slipping inside these clamps, so I took a hammer and I smashed this clamp a little bit to tighten it up. So now it's really grabbing the line good. So under suspension flex, it won't move around too much. You can see how that line goes up there to the block. Um, mounting these lines is tricky. You know, there's a lot of steering and the switch and flex going on, but I got it just right now. That goes up to the block down here, here, and like that. You see where I had it, it rubbed the tire a little bit right there. Didn't really tear the line too bad, but good thing I caught it after just driving around the yard, otherwise it would have been a problem. So plenty of clearance there, plenty of clearance there. So that was one adjustment I did this morning. Another thing I did back here was I put a zip tie to hold the line closer to the control arm because I had this big loop in it. Don't want stuff getting caught underneath there, right? The less area you have between the line and the frame, for the control arm, the less chance of a stick going in there. So you want to follow it pretty closely. Everything else looks good, no leaks. The back line, I've kind of I rotated it up a little bit to tuck it in there some. Again, keep everything as close to the boxes as you can, and you'll have less chance of stuff grabbing it. So that looks pretty sharp. It follows right up the black, the black bracket and runs up to there. So the rear lines are really easy. The front lines are kind of a pain in the butt um, to get down under the hood where those lines hook up. So from the factory, this thing has like these kind of two-piece lines. It replaces with one long braided line. That's all in the instructions. It looks really good. The ground clearance is immense. Made it a little wider. Obviously, my front axle angles are almost straight because it squatted some. Um, I always try to explain this to people, but when you put a wider offset wheel or you put portals, it puts more force on the shock. The distance from here to the center of the wheel is how much leverage the tire has to apply force to the shock. So if you space the tire out more, it's got more leverage on the shock. You need to increase your preload to have the same static height. So I'm obviously going to do that. I'm going to increase the preload. But overall, pretty happy with it so far. Looks really freaking sharp. And I think it's going to really kick ass and take names. One thing I'm going to do is drive it around and I'm going to retorque these upper ball joints because I couldn't get them super tight you can't get impact on there. So I'll pull out the cotter pins after I drive around the yard so I'll torque those down a little bit better. Um, but so far so good, um, looks pretty mean, doesn't fit in my garage, but it does fit in my carport overhang, so it'll sit here for a while until the shop gets here. Um, yeah, it's pretty excellent, just driving around the yard, rides good, um, so far, steering is a little bit more steering effort, like I was saying last night, I would like a wheel that had less offset, but this is the lightest 22 you can get, and it coincidentally also has the least offset, so. You know, we'll see what's available. I'll keep looking if I can find something better, but this is about as good as it's gonna get right now. To tell you in the video, 
You do need to do the front alignment. It was close, but I had to tow the front of the wheels in a little bit, use a tape measure, set it about zero. Um, you need rear wheel spacers. I use one and a quarter on each side, and um, you need to adjust all the shocks. So other than that, this is a totally comprehensive uh, walkthrough on how to put portals on a Talon.